This Business Podcast, the two business guys mastermind, uncovers for you secrets and share tips and tricks to entrepreneurship as they mastermind on how to have startup, operational, and overall business success so that you can go on to get better results. Enjoy. Building a business from scratch is always the exciting part. Listen in as the two business guys mastermind on a business they're starting from scratch and a few other goings on from around the world. Enjoy. So, hey, guys, we're, we're back and uh, we've got something interesting to talk about. We're going we're gonna to do something a little bit later. Follow us here. Track us here. Um, because we're going to do something that John and I love to do. We like to create stuff, right? Not only do we like to come on and talk about different things and mastermind and stuff like that, but we are creators too, right? So we're going to create a business from scratch, right? And follow here. Now, we want to talk a little bit about something that, that I think inspired inspires me and then something that inspired John in creating this business from scratch. Now, there's a couple of... of examples, if you will, you know, things to model. But what we want to get into is something that is on everybody's tongue and on everybody's mind. And I think it's something that's going to disrupt the market for a long, long time. And that is what happened with GameStop. Okay, now, just to kind of bring you up to up to speed, if you haven't, uh, haven't seen this, but GameStop stock started just going through the roof. And people couldn't understand. It. It's like, what is going on with GameStop? You know, then they, they jumped to AMC and stuff like that. Well, what ended up happening was you had some, uh, in, in a nutshell, and I'm telling you, John, I spent all day in groups and stuff like that, just talking about this, posing questions and saying, okay, how can you benefit from this? Look at this. Here's an example. Put a challenge out there. It says, what is the big lesson from this? This is how I put it out there. And people were just jumping in. Well, you know, you got to be in position. You, uh, you know, the bigs always win and all that, right? Well, what ended up happening was GameStop was just a regular old stock. It was, it's a company that is on the other side of technology, basically. You used to go in and get your games. You used to go in and get your, um, you know, PlayStations. That's is a place where you can stop to get your games. Well, of course, with all things internet and things being able to literally be streamed to you, the business model is busted, right? Stock was languishing, but so you had some hotshot hedge fund person that decides, hey, I'm going to short this stock. Now, here's the part that I never personally liked, that a person could come in short a stock. In other words, go in, you know, and say, I believe this is going to fall. So I'm going to put a position in on it that says, if it falls by this, I make money. They put their money in there. Well, the, a subgroup uh, in Reddit gets a little bit upset with this. You know, and they they basically band it together, band it together to buy GameStop, uh, GameStop stock. Well, you know that supply and demand matters, right? So anytime you have money pouring into a stock, it rises. And now this hedge fund, keep in mind, was shorting the stock, hoping that it fall, fell. And these redditors kind of like didn't like that. They, they, you know, this is wrong. You're doing this is not that's not good. We don't want you making money on in this way. And this happens a lot. Short sellers get out there and say, hey, I don't like, let's say, Tesla. And then they start dogging. This is the part that's wrong. They start dogging out the company. That just seems to me to be unfair. It's the opposite of pump and dump. Somebody comes and pumps up a, a penny stock, the stock rises, right? And then they dump it and make a, a pile. That's illegal. So why isn't then shorting a stock, going on, on these, these popular channels, dogging the stock out, making sure it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and then you know, reaping, reaping the benefits from that? Well, these Redditors got a hold of that and says, oh, the heck if you will. Banded together, John, and they absolutely have seen the stock go up. It is amazing how a, you know, and it was this stock was like I think it was um, you know low maybe single digit but low double digits now it's like through the roof, all because of the group. And then what happens? People pile on, they jump in, they find out what's going on. 
Well, now, if you ever heard of the popular, popular um, um, investing app, Robinhood, well, Robinhood is like in the middle. And a lot of things, Robinhood, literally, so many people have been getting into Robinhood because it's like, hey, we rob from the rich, give to the poor kind of thing. Or in other words, we give you a platform that you can now invest like the bigs, right? And people love it, you know, especially the younger group, they loved it. It's like, yes, this, fun, this is for us. Well, they actually had to stop trading on GameStop because yeah. it was busting, get this, it was busting there, they couldn't scale in essence, right? All this money coming in. So they had to do the transactions. They literally had to go get a billion dollars just to do a transaction. So they stopped. And there's, there's a little bit deeper because a lot of the Redditors in the group and the, the way they were teaching it was, you know, they were doing, buying the stock on margin and it was all kind of crazy stuff. So then Robin Hood had come and says, okay, you know, if you're going to do margin uh, margins, you got to have, they started putting all these rules in and it started getting attention of regulators, which is the bad part. And this is what I put to the group. I says, look, once the regulators get in and says, they are affecting billion dollar hedge funds, right? Have all the money, have all the lawyers. They're making them lose money. Maybe we had to look at this group. That's the bad part that's coming from this. But when I pose this to the group, John, and this is what we, I want us to get into and discuss today, was the power of a group, mm -hmm. right? The power, whereas, you know, so many people were like, well, we are powerless. People were on talking about how they paid off their student loans. <laughs> what did it like, make like nine? We made money. Nine billionaires were made out of that. You know, it, like. it's crazy. I, I, you know, I didn't see that part, but think about this. If you had millions and millions of dollars in, yep. in in um, GameStop, let's just say because back in the day you you just uh, you were a buyer and holder or you're one of the founders or whatever it is, right? You, it's a publicly traded stock. So somebody's probably got a pile somewhere, hadn't been thinking much about it and just kept it, right? Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad because of course the value goes to zero, then you lose all your investment. Well, boom, shoots the other way. Yeah, right? here I just pulled up this article. It says... Nine investors made sixteen billion dollars. Nine investors instantly. Yep, nine investors made sixteen billion dollars. Now that instantly. means, that, of course, they had millions and millions of dollars. And if they bought, here's the key part: if they were buying it on margin, right, which allows you to absolutely, you can lose your shirt, your house, and everybody else's house, or you can, you know, buy the neighborhood. Because when you buy on margin, and we're not we're not stock guys or anything like that, but we mastermind on business. So when we see a model, we dig into it. And in the in margin space, it allows you. Let's say you had I don't know hundred thousand dollars involved. You get it on margin. Now you can get two hundred thousand dollars, right? You can use one hundred percent of what you're doing in certain cases. Not wise, because if you could lose one hundred percent plus, right? You could lose all your money and still owe. But that my point is is that. Imagine if they did it right. Now, this is the part where the regulators are probably going to look at this and go, hey, wait a minute. Isn't this just, and this is what I posed to the group, some people in answer in the group, I must have answered 40, back and forth 40 times talking to people, and it's still going. Um, uh, if you, the regulators are going to be looking at this and they're going to be saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, what you say, 16 billionaires made, but how many people were hurt that jumped in and then if the stock starts falling, they get hurt. They start losing things, right? And then they start becoming the face of a lawsuit. And then if you think about the whole, uh, what happened to the Wolf of Wall Street, this is what he did. He went to jail for pumping and dumping. Well, isn't this kind of the same way, right? You, you, you kind of talk up a stock, but what they're basically saying, John, is that, well, isn't this what short sellers do? They talk down a stock, right? And there was this real famous uh, hedge fund guy that didn't like, um, uh, was it Herbalife? Oh, I can't think of it. It was one of these vitamin companies and he went on, he was going on every talk show that he can think of. He did not, he shorted this stock, went on there, started dogging them out, right? With the idea that the stock would fall. And then you remember you had a guy who was shorting Tesla, was putting millions of dollars 
into betting it would fall and it went through the roof. That dude lost his shirt. But of course, you're smart enough to put what they call puts and holds. It's I buy at, I sell at if it goes this far. But somebody that don't know the ceiling or the basement, if you're on the law side, is infinite. And that's where you can get hurt. But if, as we think about this, what I wanted to strip out of this, John, and have for our discussion in our eventual talk about building from scratch is the power of a group, <clears throat> right? The power of the Redditors being able to absolutely affect a traditions old institution. And we, let's call them Wall Streeters. Right, that was the 1% against the 99%. And the 99% says, huh, we're gonna fix. Now, here's what I say, I say to uh, anybody who looks at this and go, I should have got in. Well, maybe so. Maybe you, having enough positions in different things, then you can ride the wave, right? But of course you gotta be careful. You know what I mean? You gotta you know, be about that kind of business, understand it. Uh, at its core and be able to leverage it very successfully. That's how you win. You know, now we hear it and we want to throw it in. I used to do that back in the day, John. I would read a money magazine or something like that. Remember they had those money magazines and they would talk about mm -hmm. the next stock, right? Or I pick up a success magazine or something. And talk. Well, by that time, come on. By the time it goes to publication, you're way behind. Mm -hmm. So... You're way behind. So in this subreddit group, they had people that this is what they did for a living. They they looked at different things and says, hey, look, we're getting ready to go over here and jump on this position. You want to come? People did. And bam. Now, that doesn't mean that GameStop is a fundamentally great right. stock to buy. It to me seems, and I say this, to me seems as a layperson, that that's artificially created. Well, jump like 14,000% or something. 14,000%. Why would that make somebody a billionaire? Think about it. If you had millions and then you sell those positions and go, but now that's where it's going to get absolute scrutiny, right? You can't, um, you're not supposed to, uh, you know, share your tra tra trading insider information, right? Didn't Martha Stewart go to jail for that? <laughs> right? you're, but now you're seeing it in a different kind of way. You're seeing the, I call it crowdsourced, crowdsourced pump and dump. That's what I call it. Reddit's also trying to do that with BlackBerry as well. Exactly. That's some of the other information. So when you think about some of these subreddit, these uh, uh, subreddit groups, it's not to say that it's bad because somebody collectively decided to get together and create a club that is for the benefit of X, right? Whatever their mission vision statement is. Now, this is something that we're gonna be talking about as we uh, talk about building a business from scratch. John and I, you know, John had an idea and he says, hey, you wanna be a part of this? And of course I look at something and go, hey, here are some of the things that we have to consider, <laughs> right? And then John being the, the, the guy he is goes, okay, let's go build out a, a business plan, let's go try to make this thing happen. And that's how sometimes guys, listen, how you have to approach businessing, mm -hmm. right? You have to approach entrepreneurship in a way that you're saying, you know, I have a focus, but I tip, I dip my toe into other opportunities, other things. What's one of the most popular clubs out there right now, as we speak, this is, uh, you know, you know, January 30th, 2021. As we speak, John, you know it because you just told me, hey, I got in. <laughs> the Clubhouse app. The Clubhouse app. Now, everybody listening to this, out of nowhere comes the Clubhouse app. And now it's on, you know, everyone's tongue. Why? Because they have done some, some of the smart stuff that, that you see companies do to build buzz. First, they're backed by some heavy duty, some heavyweights, Andreessen and Horowitz. Their apps, so they got some cash and they got some cash from some people that know what they're freaking doing. 
And here comes Clubhouse that puts up the velvet ropes saying not everybody can get in, only iOS people. Well, guess what? The people that own Apple products are happy. Hey, another thing, because I'm a part of the Apple clan and Apple, you know, cult or whatever it is, Apple group, we get to do. You still, you still, it's still have to be invited in. It's not, and it's you, a person rope. only gets two, two uh, invites. What does that well. mean? Listen to what we're talking about, guys, and, and strip Limited. away the principles. Yep. Scarcity. That's mm -hmm. using the scarcity model. So we want you, as you listen to us, talk about these things and then see how we're going to be you know, starting our own business from scratch. You now get a chance to see, oh, if I can include and create some scarcity, right? You have people that have the fear of missing out on the next new thing, the FOMO approach, right? They built all of that into the, um, what's the word? I'm trying to think of the word, the um, you know, atmosphere of Clubhouse. But in it, at its core, is it valuable? At its core, think about what it does. It's voice social media. <laughs> right now, we got social media where we're looking at pictures, IG, right? We're looking at uh, entertainment, TikTok. Think about this now. And we are looking at uh, pictures, Facebook, getting to know, you know, finding our friends and family and staying in touch. But now something that comes out and they say, hey, you know what? We're just going to have voice which is at the cusp of becoming the next new thing. More, uh, uh, you know, um, most things voice. If you notice, we already, we started it. It's not brand new because Alexa, Siri, and all of them are voice uh, apps. Hey, Siri, help me with this. Hey, Alexa, can you do this for me? Using your voice to command. What else can you do with your TV? Voice. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, I want to watch so-and-so. You see my point here? So what does that do? That is reducing friction. That is reducing all the things that get in the way of you achieving something. Mm -hmm. So now Clubhouse comes along and says, hmm, this is collectively is happening. Can we now create something that gets people to you know, like our stuff, do our stuff, and be involved? And get this. They got money behind it so they can build out some stuff because somebody says, you know what, this might work. They're starting and trying something. And of course, you'll get, you know, competitors and you'll get people that um, try to copy it and model it. And that's what we're saying. Hey, couldn't we build from scratch a group that we can, you know, you know, and I, what I'm talking to John about is like, let's listen, let's use some of those approaches. Let's use that exclusivity. So John, you want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, as much as you want, I got some stuff if you, I don't know how much you want to show, but we start thinking about creating something in the group standpoint. And what I bring to the table then is, okay, let's think about this. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. Cause we don't, we could start stuff all day long and people could go, meh, I don't care. So we now have to put in some of the levers and approaches that make people go, oh, that's interesting. And maybe we got models out there. The Redditors and what they did, they are a val. They said, hey, we're going to create some value for you. And now it's proof. Couldn't that do something for Reddit stock? Couldn't that do something for people saying, I'm going to start a group on Reddit? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. They are creating. The How can your business do the same thing? Think about what you have. You know, John and I talk about this a lot. Your business is in business to do something for you. You don't work for Absolutely. the business. The business is supposed to work for you. So, John, we're going to, you know, run over a little bit of what, what you had came up with. And then we're going to walk down some of the things that we're going to do and show you guys how we're going to go about creating this thing. Absolutely. And in, in talking about the power of groups, this is this has been a phenomenon that that has been existed since the beginning of time. And we even look at in American history. Um, how influential groups like the Masons and Knights of Columbus were up, up to probably the 1930s, 1940s in the United States. Uh, some of our founding forefathers um, were, in, were, were in the Masonic Lodges. Um, we all see, we see that in a different form in, in current day in the Tea Party movement or the Proud Boys or whatever. I mean, these 
groups can be established to do good or to do bad. Um, they, it's, it's a ideology. BLM, Black all, Lives Matter, all groups, yeah. everybody. All groups. And it, it's, it's having the same ideology. And I was talking with Randy about this. And as entrepreneurs, do we have mentors? Because I know a lot of small business owners do not have mentors. Um, they don't even know where to find a mentor. Um, so why not start an organization of four mentors that are, that are in their later stages, 40s and above, where these group of individuals, um, they have to have the same ideology. So just like any of the other groups, they would believe in the power of small business. They'd be business owners. <clears throat> they would have a, a sense of community and self-development and, and, and want to mentor future generations, but then using that as a platform to be able to go to the younger generations to build up entrepreneurship. That's right. Uh, and so this is where, where this came from. And the, the goal is to get uh, business owners who, who are, um, that's why we set the criteria, who are experienced, um, who, you know, not young business people, people who've been in business for a while. Um, it doesn't matter what type of business, but uh, <clears throat> putting characteristics around that. When I was in, gra when I was, uh, excuse me, doing my internship in college, I was doing it at a, uh, a museum. And the director of this museum, I was doing a project specifically for him. And he was in one of these groups. Um, it was called The Outsiders. <laughs> the Outsiders. And, and, and uh, basically it was the most powerful people in that area. And they would get together once a month. And every month, somebody would kind of give the state of the union on their specific profession. So if they were in the pharmaceutical industry or, or if they were in uh, politi politics or, or different things, um, they would stand up and they, and they would educate this group um, on, hey, what's going on and what should we be looking out for um, in the future? I want to be able to create that for entrepreneurs, to be able to give them the resources that they need and a group to walk beside them, because this is uh, how we build communities. This is how we build generational wealth. This is how um, we combat uh, the, these big corporations coming in and, and buying out mom and pop shops and, and everybody pretty much having to, to sell everything they have and go work for one of these big organizations. We wanna create a strong, small business economy. Um, so that was my, that's my initial thought going into it. And it would be, it would be centered, centered around self-development and mentorship. Um, those are the two big tenets. Yeah, and that's, the great thing about this everybody is, so, so okay, that's the, that's, the, that's the big idea. And you also know that that's not really new, mm -hmm. but at the same time, can you like Reddit's not new? And that's why they have subreddits. Uh, Clubhouse approach is not new, but they have a different mechanism to make it seem new, <laughs> right? And as we think about the group that um, that uh, is being created right now, the business from scratch, is it's not new. So it's not going to make people go, hey, look, that's too new. I don't understand it. It scares me off. We're just asking the question of can we create something that builds up a momentum over time that has a specific purpose? And that's what, when we start building these things out, and building from scratch are considerations, right? So building from scratch. So let's take a look at something. John, can I show this? Or if you don't feel comfortable showing um, no, go ahead. some go of the ahead. bylaws that you had, had created, let me double check it. Here it is, uh, club information. And perhaps I just do it really quickly. But anyway, so we start thinking about how John says, hey, listen, let's, um, let's create some of the 
information around it, right? What is it going to look like? How do you, you know, characteristics of it? Um, what is it involving? It involves civic service. It involves memberships. You know, what's what that might look like, what the meetings are going to look like. Now, John is very, very good at that. And what I'm very, very good at is saying, okay, let's make sure that this makes sense to anybody, mm -hmm. right? Let's, let's make sure that you see legality here. We see uh, censorship. So these are some of the thinkings. When you're building from scratch, you're, you're kind of putting your ideas on paper and you're kind of going, hmm, and I say kind of is because you're, you, you don't know for sure yet. You just know that you have an idea and you put some thinking around it and then you create a couple of things, right? And you start going, okay, could this work out all right? Let's double check. And let's go ahead and dig into these, right? So I'm starting to just put a little bit of information um, in here, explain the symbol being that, okay, if I'm going to get you excited, I better be able to get you excited. When you see that symbol, you know that that's power. So explaining the symbol out, uh, the symbol out a little bit, what does that mean? Now, this is something that was created a couple of weeks ago, the Entre Hustlers Club. So it says, okay, what does that mean? Well, the Silver Panthers Entre Hustler Club, right? It is a, you're an entrepreneur, but you know about getting your hustle on, right? So we kind of combine those two things. And then I says, okay, why should members want to be a part of this club? What's the primary selling proposition? You float it out there, right? A people got a million things they could be a part of. And then what is the challenge for you? In our case, the challenge for us is to answer these questions. So John, without getting too much into specifics, came back with a business plan, right? Now, this is something, listen, everybody, you don't have to hoist this up on your shoulders yourself. You really don't. You got your fibers of the world. You got your upworks of the world. You got guru. You got all these different places that can help you put together the visuals, right? And I think uh, in, in this particular case, John says, hey, here's what I want as a part of the business plan. And as a part of this business plan, send it over to a freelancer, have them build out that part of it. Okay, let's go ahead and stop this share here, right? And then what that then allows you to do is look at the business plan. You can get it done very, very quickly. And here's what you have to do next. You're building from scratch, everybody. EFS, building from scratch. You now have to answer the questions on that business plan whether it is a club, whether it is a group, whatever it is, whether you wanna have a Facebook group, where you wanna have a IG group, whether you wanna have a Reddit group, you can come up with, again, like John did, he says, I bullet pointed it out. Then he says, well, I need to collect some other people that might wanna be a part of this, right? He, he comes to me and says, hey, let's, let's, let's jump in there. And I says, I, I kinda like this idea. But when I come in and I say, okay, I like it even better if it answers these questions, right? We test it. It could float very well because guess what's happening? Right now you have people that are already doing it. So now you're getting a chance to see the power of groups. Whereas if you try to sneak up on people when nobody's thinking about this, right? Then they kind of go, ah, I'm good. Or I don't understand it enough. You know, I'll give you an example. When I started the Earn Every Dime Online show, three years ago, people were like, oh, I'm good. You know, I started getting traction. People started listening, you know, the people that were already in that space. But then when the pandemic hit, people were like, I need to learn about this. And boom, the show starts taking off. Why? Because now people are already seeing that this is a part of the fabric of what a society is already into. It's not new anymore. It's not making people aren't afraid. People have a little familiarity. And then now you can come in and add value. That's how things seemingly pop overnight but they were around for a long time. Zoom, for example, had been around for a long time, a long time. But when the pandemic hit, because get in mind, keep in mind, they had been around for a long time. They had you know, worked out some bugs. People had been using, they had a group of people that used it all the time, a conferencing tool. And then it became the easiest thing to get into to do the next stuff. And Zoom stock went through the roof. And then, of course, that brings competitors. And now there's some really good competitors. StreamYard says, hey, we do a thing. Now StreamYard is, uh, you know, thinking about raising money and going public and all that kind of stuff and making the millionaires out of the people that just got, to get, to, got together just to play music. 
that's the stream yard. It was a guy with a guitar that had wanted a way to distribute his information to his friends and family and his fans. Are you kidding me right now? And expanded it out. So we are looking at this group, right? The Silver Panthers Entre Hustler Club and saying, okay, Silver Panther does not mean age. It means what is a Silver Panther? Look that up. What we want you guys to do is look that up and send us information, you know, put in, uh, if, we, if you're seeing this on YouTube, put in the comments, what is a Silver Panther to you? Look at the definition and then, you know, how you can apply it to your, your business and your life and how you can leverage it. So John, what more should people be thinking about when they're building from scratch, like we're building from scratch? Absolutely. You got your business um, right there in front of you, right? So, yeah. So when I, uh, first I wanted to put down the main bullet points in which I've done, haven't actually started building the business plan yet, but do you want to bring up the uh, bullet point business operating plan template? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up. Let me go ahead and grab it real quick. Did I put it up? Uh, okay. As promised, uh, club information. I don't think I have that one, John. Did, did you send it via uh, email? I just sent it uh, probably 15 minutes ago. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull that up and see what we can come up with everybody. But if you could, while I do that, John, talk about some of the highlights when people are building from scratch. What is what's what are some of the top things they should be looking for? <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely. Um, so basically, you want to get out. What is it that you want to do? So um, what what is it that you want to accomplish in this group or company or whatnot? So the name, of course, is one of them. Who's going to be a part of this in the beginning? Um, is it just going to be you that establishes it, or mm -hmm. you can have a group? come alongside you what are your bona fides uh because if if i'm setting up a club in regards to entrepreneurship but i've never owned a business nobody's gonna nobody's gonna want to join that club because i don't have in, any bona fides in being an entrepreneur um so you want to make the sure who are you yeah. how who are you approach now now i want to add a little caveat there everybody is that it's not to say you won't get in and have, you know, that feeling of, man, you know, I'm a fraud. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm starting this thing. It's not to say that you can't get in and immerse yourself mm -hmm. so deeply into a situation that you can maybe create something, you know, from scratch. Lemonade was built by some people that had no experience in the insurance industry. And they are a unicorn. They're a billion dollar company now because they went public but he did have business experience, right? Now, you let's say you have no business experience, then what is the opportunity here? This is what we really, I want you to see, get a part of one of these clubs. Let's say you work 25 years in industry and you have, you, you've never done business. Here you are, you're 42, 43, 50, right? And you say, well, I never started a business. How you can learn to do this very quickly is to associate yourself with a mentor. That's one of the main tenets behind why uh, SPC is being started. You know, the Silver Panthers Club for you to come in and say, hey, wait a minute. I don't know some things. I want to learn these things. And then what we'll do is match you up with a mentor. Right. You're going, this is great. I have somebody that maybe, you know, is my age, somebody that is, you know, has a similar background. And if you guys know my story, I started out, I drove, drove forklift for a lot of years. I, back when I was really young, I was a piece of car driver, right? I, I didn't go to college right away. I got my degrees as an adult. The, you may say, I want to hang out with that guy um, because he may know my situation that I got to get up and go in here and drive this forklift and, and, and use it to feed my family. And, but I've been able to transition from that experience into something else, right? So as we think about it, you look into the club and go, okay, great. It's just not a whole bunch of people getting around, you know, drinking virtual coffee. They're trying to help me get to a space, a spot. And that's their whole goal. We want people in there that have that heart to mentor. 
And we want you obviously coming in so that you can say, I need to be talking with John. I need to be talking with, with uh, Chris. I need to be talking with a, a Todd, a Robert, because they seem to have the kind of experience. Or you talk to all of us. Mm -hmm. You see what's happening here? And then as we do this, when we have this power to say entrepreneurship, the power of entrepreneurship, we believe can save people's lives. I'm serious on this because if your job goes away and you know how to entrepreneur, you know how to entre, you're an entre hustler, you'll always find a way to make money. You see, you see what's happening here? Why we put entre and hustler together. Entrepreneur, right, is a noun. Hustler is a verb, right? Mm -hmm. That guy is a hustler. That girl's a hustler. You see what's happening here, right? And we are now combining those two things with that in mind, creating the club and saying, come on, get your mentor on and get out there and start creating some good stuff. So um, this is what we're looking at, John, you know, without, like I say, giving away the whole thing, we don't want somebody to see this and go, hey, I'm gonna build that based on them. <laughs> but who, here's the first thing, who are you? What, you know, let's get a little bit of that in. Who are you? What's your business history? What's your business name and ownership name? Go ahead and walk us through this a little bit, John, and I'll scroll. Absolutely. Just the basic tenets of um, what, what your business is about. What, what are you going to provide to the world? Um, because nobody wants to, to go in and be a part of something that they don't understand the distinctives. If, if, it's, if it's cloudy, what that group does um, I might think, hey, you know, that's that's going to be a waste of my time. But if I know going into it, these are a group of individuals who have established companies and they've run companies and they're going to be feeding information that I might not be privy to in my everyday life uh -huh. or I might not have the opportunity to have coffee or sit across from someone um, and have that intimate relationship and them in my corner rooting for me to succeed in business and giving me tips and tricks and whatnot. Uh, business ownership is a very lonely, lonely thing. It can be, and, absolutely. And, and a lot of our friends and families uh, don't necessarily understand business ownership. They're like, hey, you know, why don't you just go get a job? Why don't you, you know, go, go do this? I don't understand why, you know, why are you always starting things and, and doing things? Um, so most people in society don't really understand what an entrepreneur uh, goes through, what they do every day. They don't understand the aspects. Um, they probably think, hey, this person works two or three hours a day and uh, they, they, it's kind of like a side thing. Um, well, no, we obviously know that that's not true. Um, so what are, the, what are tips and tricks and, and different things um, other individuals who have experienced some of uh, life's hurdles uh, that we could come together, we can share knowledge, um, we could root on, you know, root for one another, just like uh, you, this year, being the pandemic and, and, and athletic teams participating, it's been a brutal year for athletic teams because they really uh, get energy. If you're an athlete, you get energy for people standing in the, in the stands and rooting for you and, and whatnot. Uh, this year, they, they really haven't had that um, with very few exceptions. Um, and even it's the, the same even thing. The, the talk shows, right? Yeah. You, the guy comes on, right? And no claps because <laughs> it's like four people in, in the audience. But, and it's the same. We need that as business owners as well. It's, it's bringing us energy. It's, it's bringing, it's breathing life into us uh, because sometimes uh, we, well, we know 90% of businesses end up failing. Yep. Um, yep. So we know business ownership is a very difficult thing. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to put in place a structure of support um, and not, not a structure of support that some regimented uh, organization that you have um, other companies and business people and they're trying to sell you stuff. 
this isn't about about networking to sell you stuff, but this is about sharing information and giving support to one another from individuals who understand that are in business themselves. That's right. That's right. And, and when you look at this, as we think about how you build from scratch, right? And again, you get a chance to see what we're getting ourselves into. One thing that I hadn't told John is that the book, audio book is ready. It finally passed through AS, uh, ASX, uh, uh, ACX's filters after four tries. Mm. I literally four no. And the reason they said no was, and it's not a big book, right? It's um, a book that we were able to condense a little bit of our mastermind and we just hit on 10 topics and we says, hey, listen, these are some things that will really, really help you. Put a little funky title, uh, a cover on it, right? Not super fancy. We're not trying to be fancy. We're trying to be effective yep. so that when you listen in and when you read the book that you can go, oh, wow, I could take some really good stuff from that. Now, here's where it ended up um, getting rejected and why I'm going to wrap this back around into the mentorship and the club approach, right? Well, because get this, I had it sent to a guy that uh, did the, the voiceover and his equipment wasn't quite what ACX wanted. And I'll give you an example. He was using some software that I'm familiar with. I don't want to say it here because I don't want to dog him out or anything, but he was using some software that in the past, get this, in the past, it was okay. In the past. But when everybody lost their jobs or so many people started losing their jobs, they started looking around for stuff to do. So they started writing books. They start, you know, doing these audio things. Then you had some people, of course, come out of the woodwork, the gurus that come out of the woodwork and, uh, and, and start saying, hey, listen, I'll help you create audio books and you can make a million dollars. So people started creating these audio books putting them on this platform and they were garbage. So the platform says we're tightening up. Mm -hmm. Now, when I uh, uh, try to take my audio book that I didn't do, I had somebody else do and have it put on there. They says, ah, well, we hear noise in the background or, well, we don't like the way this is. And I was like, are you kidding me? I've had other stuff go on the platform and it was fine. But all of a sudden, this is not fine. Well, of course, you can either fight. In fact, it got to the point, John, where I was about to give up and just try other platforms. But I know that this is the one that gets you on Audible, right? And of course, you want your book on Audible because that's where you can make your money. And it's like being the you know being in the most popular store or the corner store. Might make a couple of sales from the corner store, but the most popular store is going to get you paid. Well, finally, I, you know, I talked to the guy and he says, look, I'll give you a full refund. I says, look, don't worry about giving me a refund. Get it right. I says, now I'm a little upset with not you, but with the, the organization. So I want to beat it now, right? I want to do what I need to do to get it in. So he went and bought some new software, right? I even gave him a tip. I says, here's a couple of more bucks for, you know, doing this extra stuff. So incentivize him. He went and bought some different software that goes in and notices these little things and, you know, hey, this is a little noise. Things like, get this, mouse clicks. That's why I went to a silent mouse because mm -hmm. I could hear clicks. When you, if you heard anybody on their webinar, you could hear these darn clicks. And they would pick up that and go, yeah, we hear that and we don't want that in our audiobooks that go through, that get on Audible. We need high quality stuff. Fine, I just literally got the congratulations. Your book now has all the things necessary to go out there and start selling on Audible. So John, that, you're hearing this for the first time. That's right? awesome. I'm, I'm so glad for that because it has it was hard. And the, you know, when you put in a lot of work and you fail, listen to what I'm saying here, and you fail a second time and you fail a third time, most people quit. Yep. Right. So imagine now you got a group of folks around you. Mm -hmm. Right. You're part of the Silver Panther Club. And what is it? Pa Silver Panther is means not just power. John, do we have the definition of Silver Panther? 
I don't have the definition. I actually uh, looked up Panther and Silver Panther, and it was Silver Panther is unique, right? So let's look up Silver Panther, right? And the symbol itself. So as we start thinking about that, you know, it's like, what does the symbol of a Silver Panther mean? Mm -hmm. You know, because some people are out there going, hey, you know, this is a bunch of old people that uh, are, 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 are Pastor Prime. Oh, quite the opposite, my friend. So when you start looking at the Silver Panther meaning, right? And so I love this. It uh, talks about, uh, uh, you know, courage. And it talked about um, you being unique. Let me look at another one here. Panther meaning and symbolism. You can go over to astrology <laughs> if you're into that kind of stuff. Oh man, this is this is so cool. I love this. A beauty and grace and protection, right? Uh, and viciousness. And when we start thinking about viciousness within the business community, we want to be out there helping you fight. As a Silver Panther, we're going to be fighting for you, and that's why. Well, we, not you just know. not just that, but go back, go back up a little bit, Randy. Go back. It's. Uh, Reclaiming. Reclaiming, right? Yeah. That's, that's just one area, right? So reclamation. Panther, right, so we're, we're taking back business. So business has been lost. Small business has been lost to large corporations. Right. And these are the Black Panthers. And John, John, what was the, when you thought Silver Panther, what was your, what was your thinking on that? Because when you're putting out a symbol, everybody, you're putting out a symbol it should probably have some good meaning so you could be explaining that to people. Yeah, it, prestige, rarity, um, something that is strong. Mm -hmm. uh, those were the things that, that I see when I think of a silver panther. Um, is something that is a unique, uh, so rare, something that is very strong that can take can take uh, some, you know, get back up when it's when it's being knocked down, and never getting giving up, just having that relentlessness. Yeah, and that's good stuff, man. That's why when when you said when you originally put it out there, I says, okay, well, we we maybe we can make it exclusive. Now, this is where we're going to bring in some business model tenants as we now build out the business plan. Right. And we're building this from scratch. We're kind of going, hey, I have an idea. Now, to a degree, what I like to talk about and teach entrepreneurs is we kind of do it a different way. We go out there and see if people are kind of into this thing and where they might be. We see that clubs, Reddit, Clubhouse, mm -hmm. clubs are trending. You see what I'm saying here, right? Now there's some older, you know, groups, B and I's and all that kind of stuff. And one of our good friends, Robert, um, Robert, Robert, he's senior. Uh, when I first met him, it was through my financial guy who says, Hey, I think this is a guy you might want to meet. He's in this club that I'm a part of called the tip club, right? And they get, they get together and they give each other's tips. So my point is, is that it's not new, but you now put your own spin on it, right? We're saying people 40 and up. So we are saying, because we want to be able to mentor the ones that are coming up, right? And we want to be not the OGs, if you will, because, you know, 40, 50, 60 is not old anymore. But we want to say, hey, we've got some seasoning. We started some things. We failed at some stuff. And now we've used the energy from those lessons to give to you so that we can smooth this out for you, right? Now, we, we want you getting your own, your own lumps. Mm -hmm. Right. We kind of want this is something that I can't remember, man. There was a uh, comedian. Can't remember his name. And he was saying, I think it was Chris Rock. He's saying we need bullies. Right. Because bullies made you better. Right now, what we're trying to do is keep you you know, out of the bully line. But at the same time, we want you out there trying, striving and feeling comfortable that you got a group of folks that are going to be able to go, hey, let's do this. OK, let's get back up, dust you off. Right. Somebody in the group is great at dusting people off. Right. Great at motivation, uh, motivation. 
right? I formed a group called the Motivation Maestros with that ideal in mind, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, how can we, as the Motivation Maestros, just put in a minute of motivation once a month designed to fire you up, mm-hmm. right? And we every uh, get together, I call them up, says, I need your minute motivation. They put it all together. A couple of people are on vacation now. I've been trying to get them those minutes. If you're listening to this, get off vacation and give me my, my minute. <laughs> but you see my point here is imagine now you have this group that's coming around saying, hey, we're going to help you with that. Now, as we build this out, we would love your comments. Some of the things that you would like to see within a group like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, what would that look like to you? You might say, well, I don't want to be sold all the time. If somebody's in the insurance, don't try to call me up selling me insurance or something like that. But you also know that that might be a natural thing that you'll need later. You got somebody available to do that. Somebody you know, like, trust, and have had conversations with, right? You may say, well, that person has access to a lot of other people that I might want to put my business in front of. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going with this. And that's why you want to come and be involved. That's why you want to come and ask your questions and let the SPCers, the Silver Panther Club, Entre Hustlers, get in there and help you, right? If you can get a good book of business quickly, off the ground fast, wouldn't that benefit you? I think it would benefit society mostly, right? Now, that's, you know, hey, I'm not selling. I'm just telling. And this is how when John, you see us building out our ideation, you get a chance to see, hey, look, these guys are doing, if you look at that, the executive summary, let me see if I can pull that up again. If you looked at that executive summary, uh, where was it? then you, you had a chance to see, I don't know, was it here, John? Let's see if this is it. Oh, no, that's it. Right. You had a chance, okay, I think this is it. No, the business plan, sorry. All right, there it is. So the executive summary itself, right? So these are just, these are just cursory things, right? These are just things that, you know, you, you should probably know your business name, business history, you know, who you are, stuff like that. But then you start digging into it. Mm-hmm. You start saying, okay, well, who are you within this business? Right now, this is- And the sp- people, and the people you want to bring into it. So- And, and the people the, you want to bring core, in. Yeah, your core group. Right. What skills do they bring? What are their hobbies? What are they pulling from? Right. And then you get into mission statement stuff. You know, these are cursory things. Now, we know that you got to go and find your customers. And I like to do it kind of the opposite way sometimes. But that's when you are now combining with somebody that approaches business differently. You know, John is very good at doing stuff like this. Right. And I have my you know way of doing doing the things that I do and says, okay, the first things first, we got to go find out if we got some people around. Well, we've determined that because guess what? Clubhouse exists. Redditors exist. Subgroups exist. The tip club type things exist. You see my point here? We're saying these are working. So now we just need to make sure that we put in something that people go, hmm, I want to be a part of that. And then put in the necessary, and this is the hard part, patience to grow it mm-hmm. right was it like the bamboo tree we got to water it for five years before you it even sprouts but once it sprouts it goes through the roof mm-hmm. right so little things like this right that we're putting in we're looking at a goals objectives action plans values desired behaviors right this is a part of your business plan that you don't always include because you're not thinking about it you're just thinking about the money you're thinking about the expenses and all that kind of stuff Well, this right here is some of the big stuff. John and I are going through these very things. Who is our target market? Because that's what I'll send John. I'll send him. So, hey, we need to find out who this is first. We need to see uh, if we can even uh, rustle up some interest. So we're going to put it out there to a couple of groups. And John's been doing that in the background, right? Ideal customer. All this is the planning part. This part part here is what people hate to do. They just like to get their ideas and run out there. And we're saying, don't do that. Look at it like this. And we're showing you based on something that we do, right? All right, let's see if we can go to competition. Answer these questions. Now this right here is a template 
Now imagine if you're part of the Silver Panthers Club and you're saying, hey, listen, I want to go and talk to uh, John and Randy about this because they got this great template. Right? And if uh, depending on how we decide to distribute this, whether we say, hey, look, this one right here is just a couple of bucks uh, or not, you at least have a chance to start getting something that you can fill out that starts answering your question, your strength, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats analysis. Now, you, if you've ever been to business school, you see, you've seen these things, right? Now, imagine if you had a silver panther, panther at your side helping you walk through this, helping you make sense out of this, looking across their Rolodex and saying, hmm, this is somebody that might help you in your strength area, weakness area, opportunity area, threats area. Right, y'all tracking this? Is this making a little bit of sense? And this is something that we use. We use tools like this that we can get created for pennies while we do core stuff, right? You get something like this built instead of spending, you know, three days building this, you say, hey, listen, maybe I can go to Fiverr. Maybe I can go to uh, Upwork. Maybe I can go to Guru, uh, people per hour and have somebody build this really, really quick while I go out and see where the customers are to your strength. Maybe I can get in my Rolodex and start inviting people even before it's ready to see if people go, hey, that sounds interesting. Let's do it. Right? Yeah, the, we did like Clubhouse. The nice thing about doing that is um, like we haven't formed this thing yet. So bringing Randy in, that that helps bring another perspective. And when we have more perspectives, so if we were to bring a handful of people we can make sure that this this club meets the objectives of everybody, not right. just one person. Right, right, and and that's the idea, right? That they people are part are in the club, but they're active. Yep. That they're saying, "Hey, maybe we ought to bring this in. Maybe we ought to think about this." And now people have a feeling of contributing. Now think about this, right? Some people just want to contribute. This is why people give back. This is why people mentor. And do you have to be rich? No, you have to be rich in knowledge, maybe rich in energy, maybe rich in connection, maybe rich in all these other areas that can be a benefit to somebody that's looking over there going, where can I get help, right? I'm starting a thing. Where can I get help? Silver Panther Entre Hustler Club. Right. And this is we we want this not to be an intimidating thing. We want to be able to create this so it's a safe space for business owners. So we could we could benefit and grow off of each other's knowledge and, and become the best business owner person um, that we can possibly be. This is this is something where nobody's ever going to get chastised for not knowing anything. Um that's why we're there is because we understand the power of community and understand um, that I solely don't have all the answers myself. That's why I want to be part of something that's bigger than me, that I can have a group that comes around me that has expertise and provide me uh, information and knowledge. Walk alongside of you, right? Isn't that great? You know, again, it seems like I love ideas that help others. That's the main thing. You know, if you help enough people, then the, the money will come. That's how we look at it. But of course, we're smart enough to understand that to build and create anything when you're building from scratch, that you better build in a revenue model. And that's one of the strengths that I love to bring to is, is looking at these revenue model opportunities, right? And John and I are going to be talking about this off air, but some of it's already created. Did you guys see that, what, that nice little plan there? Well, that plan could now be sold as a revenue generating thing to start the club. Mm -hmm. You guys seeing that as you're putting your stuff together, we're suggesting to you uh, that you start looking at that and say, hey, that's content. And that's content that somebody may need. It could be the basis. Here, here's one thing. This is a little odd, but I didn't realize this. When people were going to AA, right, um, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, that they had a, uh, and I've never been, you know, but 
they'd had a booklet that kind of is the bylaws, right? Mm -hmm. And they started, you know, if I'm not under getting this wrong here, anybody, you guys come on if I got it all wrong, um, that they, I think they used it as a um, revenue generator to kind of keep the, the groups going, mm -hmm. right? Hey, here's this book. It's only a couple of bucks, buy it. And, you know, it'll fund the thing. So now your group, and in this case, you know, SBC, Silver Panther Club, is then saying, hey, we've got some material here that we want you to get and we want you to you know, take a look at it because we're trying to build up the organization so that it's self-sustaining. We don't have to go out there and, you know, get it into people's pockets, right? Maybe a little bit of a membership model, not on your end, but on the other end. Right. The platform is created. And then when you become a Silver Panther, if you will, you know, you're, you're 30 something, you're 20 something, and now you're 40 and you qualify, come on in. Mm -hmm. And now look at all this great stuff. Is this, think about what AARP did, right? How they were started. There are, they are an affinity group that was started by a big, back in the day, big insurance company so that they would have somebody that they can have all this information, information for it. But if you look at AARP, they've got a ton of information. I mean, this is there. So we're trying to create something like that that is, um, you know, that is more tangible, right? You can kind of, you know, walk over and say, hey, we kind of know these guys. They look like us, right? And mm -hmm. they have similar experiences. I want to be a part of that because I think it will shave off massive amounts of time into what I'm trying to do in life and business. And keep in mind, John, put that component in there, self-development. Business, and this is why I'm attracted to this, is because it hits the elements that are important, that are near and dear to my own heart. Business and self-development, right? And I've created uh, different organizations, different companies, different businesses that are related to that thing. Citizen CEOs was started for that, John. When I started Citizen mm -hmm. CEOs, it was like, hey, I want ordinary people to be able to start extraordinary businesses. Using business for self-development. Mm -hmm. You guys hearing that? Not just business for the money, but business as a basis for. So when he says, hey, listen, I want this group to have that self-development component, I was like, yep, I'm on. That, that, say no more. Now let's do some of the business planning as if we're just building it from scratch. This is what you're going to be doing when you get out there and start your thing. Model this, right? Look at what we're doing. Be a part of it. We're going to be inviting you in and, you know, be a part of this as it's getting its traction, right? I tell somebody, I says, you know, a tsunami to a surfer is an opportunity, <laughs> Right. You know, now you don't want to be on the shore, but a surfer goes big wave. <laughs> right. So you want to be a part of before something becomes a tsunami, you want to say, hey, I wrote it when it was a small wave and now it's this big thing. And I'm a part of that, too. That's what we're suggesting to you. So, John, before we cut out of here, man. Can you see how we've been able to to uh, introduce this whole uh, Robin Hood thing, GameStop thing, and Redditors, and the power of a group, and how they can change everything, how it can make people money, right? And then the power of utilizing mentors. Mm -hmm. We just had a guy on last week who um, he wrote a really, really good book. I helped him, you know, with it a little bit, and it's uh, Alvin Hills the Fourth. We had him on last week to talk about his businesses. Mm -hmm endless opportunities what is it what's the other one uh tech west michigan yep Miss, or west michigan west, tech west michigan tech so with the idea that if, if you notice what we talked about it was self-development helping you know young uh, men and women self-develop mm -hmm. and young men and women get into business and specifically in the tech space we love having people on like that you know, and we typically are doing our own thing, right? We're two business guys masterminding, but we love to have you on to talk about your thing. Women, men, it doesn't matter. Let's come on. Let's get it. You know, have a conversation with folks out there so we can start showing them 
how what you're doing can work for their business so they can model it and go out there and create themselves a nice book of business. So what's the last thing we want to say to folks, John, before we get out of here? Last thing that I want to say is if you sign up to watch our podcast. You've already got it printed? I've, ar- I've already got it printed. Oh, uh, look at Randy's that. Gonna, Randy's going to pick a name and you get a free Entre Hustler quarterly planner. All right. All right. I saw that on your website. Yep. So right. already printed up. Nice. Nice. And look, we've got another planner that we use on, on the website that for free. Right. Right now it's free, mm-hmm. but we're are starting to see as many people that are buying these things, hit this, everybody, as many people are buying these planners, we're offering ours for free, but there's something we ask of you, right? We say, hey, listen, drop your email in and bring us a couple of other folks. Mm-hmm. Bring a couple of other folks over to the show. They might, they'll get a plan or two with these planners work, man. They work very, very well. So that's all we want to say to you guys today. We're going to be building this thing from scratch. Hopefully you're able to pick up, pick some of the things that we talked about, pick them up and use them for your own business. Be on the lookout for some of these other things. If you're watching this on YouTube, comment, you know, how can you put in a couple of things in your business from what you listen to today? How can you utilize some of these concepts? Thinking about what we, we spoke about earlier with the Redditors. Uh, what we talked about with Clubhouse and how Robin Hood is, you know, in the, the, the middle of all of this stuff, even if they're kind of in trouble right now, but how you can be that middle person, that platform that people go, I'm going to jump on that to now get to here, mm-hmm. right? And how GameStock, if you were a company that is saying, hey, I want to put it out there, how their stock has gone through the roof because some other company was prote- uh, some other group was protecting them basically from a bully. You see that P- basically it says you will not beat up on GameStop. We're going to protect it. And then some people made some money uh, as a result. All right. Hey, everybody get out there and start putting this stuff into play and let's get back together next week. We'll see you then.